Okay, so list all the OS uh, accounts is in, except the uh, system, uh, you know, accounts. So it's supposed to be here. So software, Microsoft, Windows, not Windows, but Windows NT, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, profile list here. So here is the list of the uh, SID numbers. So these guys are the system accounts. That's why NIS is actually telling you that except these system accounts here. So here is one user. It is uh, informant. The other one is admin 11. The other one is, uh, what is that? Temporary. Yeah. So these are the three users that we have find. Of course, you have to check for the other location, but I don't remember. It. So there is another one that also keeps the number of the user so oh, okay network is also a good one to take a look at it and it's supposed to be um current control set services tcp ip yeah right here and the uh, tcp ip under parameters interfaces so you can see the interfaces right here so can you guys tell me whether this is a static ip or the HTTP? Yeah, it's a DHCP server, right? DHCP configuration, it's not a static IP, and the IP address is 10.11.11.129, and the DHCP server is 1.11.11.2, so it's also the gateway. So that's the TCP IP configuration here, so you already have the uh, IP address, and you notice that there is only one interface has IP here, and no other interfaces. If you have more, that you will be probably have multiple uh, TCP IP interfaces right here. Right. So I use uh, autopsy in uh, if N case is not available. In most of the case, N case is not available because expensive product. Okay. So uh, when you created a uh, case, it's simple wizard. I'm not going to show it to you, but. You need to add the source here. Again, like a FTK imager, we will show the uh, logical file here, and then, you know, this this image, and then show the location. And uh, when you did that, you will end up with something like this. So I wanted to show that to you guys, so you can uh, also optimize the finding. So this is a kind of modular uh, application. It's open source, and it's being actively developed. So it helps, opens you a number of options, which one do you want to run on this machine. So for example, I choose to analyze the virtual machine extractor, interesting files, and uh, embedded files extractor, hash lookup, recent activity. So those kind of things I choose. It takes some time, you know, as I said, uh, the analysis may take between 30 minutes to hours, maybe days. So that's why I run this before and get it ready and make the cache available. So I can quickly show you the results. So let's assume that you run that, you get the results here. And this is how it looked like when you uh, completed the scan. So let me close this weave section first and uh, keep only the uh, analysis results. So there are a few things really, really important for us to identify the case. So the first one is the web history and web downloads, even the web search. So here's the important question for you guys. So this is what I'm looking at the, the web search actually. Before that, let me show you the web history here. So in the web history, it shows the HTTPS, google.com, search, something, something. So there are thousands of records here but the URL is HTTPS. How on earth an, an uh, analyst, uh, you know, forensic investigator can see an HTTPS URL? Well, you cannot because it's encrypted, so you can see only HTTP. But it's, in this case, it's HTTPS. It's in a Google or a Chromecast. Yes, Not that's right. right. So this is uh, sometimes confusing. This result is not coming from a man in the middle device it's not coming from a wiretap or maybe it's not coming from a firewall instead this is coming from the user itself so the endpoint so in the endpoint you can see the result so when you type your in 
<laughs> so, I didn't answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> so you were asking about content of HTTPS packet. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not visible uh, in the middle of many the middle attackers. So, yeah, this is how we can see that. And uh, so the chronology is also a good and really important one here. <laughs> Of course, in this case, it's a little bit easier and it's easy to analyze in a one hour uh, session. So, and uh, obviously, it's, it's searching for something on Google here and looking for something. So, that's the good part of uh, autopsy. It also helps you to look at the web search here. As I said, it's a simple case. Uh, so, in Google, it's looking at uh, the information leakage cases and looking at for interesting search words as well so internet explorer and uh, when if i scroll up here it's also searching for data leakage matters here so <laughs> that's interesting so our guy is searching for data leakage methods here so obviously this is a kind of a data leakage and we see that it's uh, the search time is somewhere around here and uh, it found something so what we need to do is we also have this time right so 2015 uh, May 23rd 2002 right so in the web history what we need to do is we need to find the what other locations it's trying to visit right so let me find some of them here it gives you another idea that hey this guy I think looking for some cloud drive uh, integration to you know do the some um, uploads or maybe they you know steal some data and uh, when we check the web downloads here we also see the similar things as you can see the time is pretty close to the search time remember he was searching at 20 p.m. and uh, this is actually almost uh, two hours later it's, he is downloading two uh, application one is iCloud the other one is Google Drive so those two are giving an idea that this guy is planning to put something on the Google Cloud or, or uh, iCloud, but unfortunately you cannot see the content of Google Drive or any iCloud application by looking at only the, uh, the computer that you are analyzing because it's a you know, remote storage that, that, that's why you cannot see. If you are lucky, you can use the web cookies to, you know, authenticate the session, but it's almost impossible in most of the cases. But we still have some, you know, ways to find. So obviously, he's gonna upload some files to the web drives. But what kind of files and where can we find that? Any ideas? So again, we can refer to the uh, sans poster here. So sans also gives us an idea that last access file, uh, so file downloads, we can look at the, some of the registry files, file, folder opening, so Windows have a good, actually almost good, let's say access log by default. So we can take a look at these registries to find out which files are being uh, accessed. So of course we are not gonna do that registry analysis instead we are gonna use autopsy capabilities right here recent documents so in the recent documents when we look at it there are a few uh, interesting uh, uh, files here so first one is the secret project data uh, obviously it's a kind of a secret thing and it's on a web drive here and uh, here another secret drive here another secure drive here so those are the things that interesting uh, seems an interesting for us and uh, remember these are uh, you know the network drives but there are two uh, links those also seems interesting one is E here so what does that mean what is the difference between E drive and uh, C or D drive Exactly. So it's probably an external drive. So that means that there is a storage that we need to look at it. Actually, that is the RM sharp one. Uh, so that's the one that we need to keep in mind that we need to analyze that there is something going on on this file, um, this drive here. And uh, so in some uh, CD-ROM drive here, 
we see that koala, penguins. So those are interesting things also. And again, the secret project data design here, another one here. So we, we have some idea that our guy is uploading something to a web drive here and also using an external drive to copy to the USB drive and also seeing something on the uh, CD-ROM drive. So let's take a look at to the, uh, the external drive first. So basically you can say do the, exactly the same thing here. So I put it here and you can take a look at to the file system here. So the orphan files right here and also some of the unallocated files here. So the quote means that these files are not exist anymore, but it's been deleted, but still can be recoverable. So that's pretty common when the attackers uh, or maybe inside the threads copy something from your environment, they tend to delete that file from their thumb drive or whatever. And you can easily recover that if the file segment that's, um, you know, this segment is not um, being overwrite it, okay? So what we need to do is right click on that and extract files. So that's pretty simple in an autopsy. So let's assume that you choose a folder here and you export it to all the files. It will take some time, but it will eventually be, will do that. Okay, so this is the content of these uh, extracted files. So there are a bunch of JPEG files, Slack files, number of folders, but remember these folders seems an, uh, familiar to us, right? Because we all already saw these files. But the interesting thing is, here's an AMR file, AMR doesn't make any sense. Zip file, let's extract the zip file. And if I double click on that, it creates another CPGZ file, definitely that's not the correct way to approach to these files. So what can I do? So these are the files that says, I am a zip file, I am a JPEG file. Is that correct? <coughs> May not be correct, right? How can we identify a file? file? Yes, that's the file command, right? Remember, we need to take a look at that. So let's take a look at to these guys, whether they are really an AML file or whatever file. Okay, so the command is uh, file, and if I move AMR file here, so a little bit long here, but it says secret project revisit points. Remember that file. Program files, Microsoft Office, program design, both snip ports, let's say by temporary revision number, da, 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 da. Microsoft PowerPoint. Hmm. Seems a kind of a template here. Let's try the other one. Let's try the zip file. Actually, you can try all of them, but the zip file is the one we are looking for. When I click on that, the file is directly saying that Microsoft PowerPoint 2007 Plus, which means the new version of the PowerPoint files, right? So that is not an actual zip file. Although its file header is a zip file, that's correct, but the, it's a specific zip file it is actually a pptx file. So let's change the extension, pptx. Now, if I come to on over here, see that this is the secret project that we were looking for. So the extension is changed, the file is deleted, but we still can recover the file from the deleted files and also get the, the actual content of a uh, PowerPoint file. So let's try another one. So this one says uh, Princey and Super Bowl AVI, AVI file. So if I try to open that, it's not being opened. And here's another JPEG file. It says uh, I'm a JPEG file, but it's a 10 megabytes of JPEG file. It's kind of interesting. It's supposed to be a really high solution, high resolution. And uh, if I do this, maybe your stay here. Again, it's an Excel file. In fact. So what I like to do, what I want to do is the, change the extension to XLSX trick that uh, the, his or she is trying to steal some data with changing the extension and also deleting the files. So that's, uh, uh, that's another thing that we can find it out. 
Uh, of course, we can take a look at the tax devices here. So we will see that the the Sandisk uh, files here. So I assume that you also have the thumb drive here. When you have the thumb drive, you can identify it from the uh, registry files, and you can see that this thumb drive is whether inserted to this particular computer or not. So this is how we can find it. And if you are working on an active computer, there's a small bit tool, USB um, uh, device view. So this also helps you to find uh, the attached USB drives before. So for example, here I can see that these are the mass storage inserted before, and here is the serial number. One thing that you need to keep in mind that the serial number can be changeable. Although it's embedded to hardware, but an attacker or maybe a somebody can create an exactly the same serial number USB thumb drive. So it's not, it cannot be the only evidence that you can blame somebody. There, there has to be more. And by the way, log also cannot be the one uh, evidence that you can blame somebody. So let me show you a good example here. Uh, so let's clear here. So this is my syslog. Syslog can run on uh, a UDP 514, right? That's a really common uh, uh, syslog port. So, but remember the UDP port, I mean the UDP protocol has a weakness, which is that? What is that? Sorry? UDP doesn't Exactly, so it doesn't have any verification, which means it's possible to spoof an IP address. If you're relying on a syslog message that's being collected with the UDP protocol, there's a chance that your UDP, your, product, your log can also be contaminated. So let me give you an example here. <clears throat> no log here, right? So let me run here a uh, nice tool here. And uh, this is actually a Melson. <laughs> Tool. I don't know. It's a German name. By the way, he's dead. He's what is? It? He's dead now. Uh, in 2011, unfortunately, heart attack. Uh, he just died in the 20s. Anyway, we respect his product. It's super good. It's super perfect. And uh, here I'm sending a syslog message with severity four, including a message. Of course, you can put a better message, but it's just a demonstration purposes. And the A is uh, random. So actually, let me remove A here for, for a second, and then I will put this here. And my target uh, syslog server is 192.168.8.136. So if I send 10 items here, I can see my local machine IP here. This is my Kali Linux IP address, 192.168.8.165. But if I put A random here, or even you can put another IP address here, so let's see exactly, uh, instead of this time, you have been fooled. Okay, so I sent 10 here. So look at the messages, last 10. What is the source IP address? So it is totally random IP addresses. You can put another, whatever IP addresses. So actually, imagine a scenario like this. So, um, Let's say Michael is our system administrator. Michael logged into Backbone. Michael created a mirror. Michael do the cell inspection, things like that. So you can imagine the scenario. So it's also possible. Yeah. It's by its nature waiting for connections here. So if I, let's say, 192.168. Let's say 8.254 is my Backbone, right? So let's assume that. Jack logged in. Okay, so I send a 10 message. Of course, I should send one, but it says Jack logged in. So whenever you are investigating your files, you may see that, okay, Jack, let's look at it. What are you trying to do, Jack? This is common whenever, uh, you know, actually I see a few uh, attack here. Uh, the attackers either try to delete the locks completely or they try to create a fake locks. So that's why if you are relying on the one line of log or one file only or one uh, USB serial number only, that's not a good idea. You, you may have multiple, uh, you know, uh, cross-checking uh, evidence to blame somebody. Okay, we also covered that one. 
And lastly, uh, so email messages, it's not showing up here, but it's a good habit to take a look at the email as, you know, of uh, somebody because they are also trying to connect. So uh, we know that the Outlook is keeping the uh, Outlook database under application data local Microsoft Outlook here. So if it's the older version, then you may see uh, other locations, but I don't memorize that. This is the default location for OSD files. Uh, but remember, OSD files is not a you know, P standard PST file. That's why you need to have a, a little bit um, sophisticated parses. You cannot open with an Outlook application. That's why I have a, a free ODT or OSD viewer here. All you need to do is select file and then it will pop up to here. So I just look at for the, the send items here. Of course, we definitely need for that. So it's uh, uh, this guy is speaking with another guy with Iman here. And uh, subject is spy and trying to keep it as simple as possible. So I need to think and uh, I confirm that, but I need more data, you know. And then he's sending another request here with two links here and if I copy one of them here let's copy this shortcut and then definitely you should submit it to a virus total or maybe with some uh, uh, safe way to download it's not a good idea to execute the you know download link with your personal browser <laughs> it's not a good idea but this is just a demo, that's why I decided to download. So it seems an MP3 file. If you try to play, mm, I can't see anything. And it says also a problem. Let's download and let's you know run it separately. Okay, so I'm gonna save under um, extracted files again. So of course it's not an MP3 file, definitely it's not gonna play. We need to take a look at the file type of this particular MP3 file as well. So mm -hmm. it's a PowerPoint 2007. So let me change the extension here. PBTX here and we're good to go. So this is the final meeting. So you caught him and uh, the, the guy is trying to, you know, steal some data from the corporate environment. So. Uh, this is what we um, usually try to approach, although we have a limited time, we, I try to do my best to give you some idea that how can we approach, how can we find these things. So generally, uh, there are a lot of locations that you need to look at it. Uh, Sans Poster is a good resource for that, but there are some good tools like Redline, like Autopsy. Uh, so those guys help you to uh, find out that uh, register locations to uh, you know parse it. If you are dealing with an um, uh, suspect, remember he may change his activities. He may change the file extension. He may try to you know uh, delete some files, and also he may try to multiple ways to steal the data. That's why you need to take a look at the multiple ways to identify that what he's trying to use. Is it using an email or cloud drive or a thumb drive or a CD-ROM drive? So those kind of things that we need to take a look at it. And also we need to look at the chronology of the attacker, like uh, where he visits, you know, Google search URLs and cookies and downloaded files, run applications, parent applications, those kind of stuff also. We can take a look at the, the topsy and also Redline. So it gives us an idea that what kind of a things we're dealing with. And of course, you need to change your direction during the analysis. So if you find that, you know, Outlook mailbox, you definitely need to open it and look at the emails. That's not a privacy thing anymore because this is a suspect. You have to take a look at that. Of course, you're not going to share anything personal with somebody else. That's a crime. And after this investigation, when you find all those things, you need to put it in a nice readable format so you can report it to your managers or maybe you know close the case. Any questions? So the users using like Chrome incognito mode, you wouldn't get any of that. Yeah, incognito window probably we may not see the URL history, but we still can find some URLs in firewall locks or maybe the content filtering locks because. I don't believe that every single 
web application is running on HTTPS uh, currently. Probably you can get some ideas. And uh, if you can't find, of course, you need to take a look at the red line indication of compromise collected to find out more. So for example, we didn't analyze the process history. We will take a look at that this really close. We will analyze an uh, infected machine with this tool so we can better understand how it's look like uh, or a compromise or maybe an, you know, an inside the threat machine look like. So we will see that, okay, this process seems an interesting. Let's analyze this process. Let's look at the handles of this process. What kind of files, what's the chronology look like? So those kind of things that we, when we look at it, we will make you know, more sense. So of course, we are not gonna solve every single case. In some cases, you will create a, you know, unfortunately, you may not blame somebody with uh, lack of evidence. So that's also another thing that happened to you.